So several people have emailed me with questions that basically boil down to the same kind of question, which is, is there a way for me in Scratch to configure where a speech bubble appears? Um, and so I made this little demo to try to show you uh, how to sort of work with this question. So first of all, let's look at this little demo. It's a really simple one. It's literally just two sprites. The boy asks, what's your name? And the horse says, my name is Trigger. And really what people are asking often in here is they don't quite like the, the placement of this. Uh, it's most likely to happen with sprites that you import from clip art somewhere on the internet more than it is with uh, stuff built into Scratch. And the idea is that the Scratch is trying to just predict where the head is. And so it draws kind of a, a shape around the, the sprite and says, well, I'm going to assume the head is at the top. And so the, the sprite comes out, uh, the, the, the speech bubble appears near what Scratch is guessing is the head. And the problem is, well, what happens if the head is down low and you want it to show somewhere? But it also just comes down to, I mean, these are a little far away from from things. Maybe you wanted the, the, the my name is trigger to come out of more of its mouth. Or what's happening is these two sprites are very, very close to each other. And so when you run it, the, the what's your name kind of comes over the top or underneath of, of the horse itself. And so people are asking, can I control where the speech bubble is placed? The simple answer to that question is no. There's no code anywhere here. There's no blocks that allow you to manipulate where the speech bubble appears uh, in relation to the sprites that are doing the speaking. But you actually can do something to sort of, uh, I don't, I don't want to say cheat, but you can do something to give you better control of where a speech bubble appears. And so I want to show you that in this little quick video. So what I'm going to do is to actually separate the speech from that the horse makes, the words the horse speaks. I'm going to separate them from the horse and actually add them to a new sprite. So I'm going to come in here to, to the new sprite, and I'm going to choose to paint a new sprite. And so I'm going to get one. And for the sake of argument here and, so, and for demonstration, so you see what's going on, I'm actually going to make um, a, 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 a red colored pixel. Now, if you were doing this in, in this particular program, I would probably make a blue colored pixel or a white colored pixel. I would make a very, very small pixel. I'm going to get out my paintbrush. I'm going to make this very fairly small. Again, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger right now than I probably need it. I'm going to make that size 6 uh, pixel, that size 6 pixel in red, and, and maybe let's even make it bigger. Let's make it size 12 for now. And you'll notice that there's this little red pixel now here right on the throat of the horse. And what I'm going to do is rather than having the horse speak the words about my name is Trigger. I'm going to associate those with this little red pixel. And in fact, I, so now I'm going to just, I'm going to delete these completely, right? The, the horse has no uh, lines at all. Danny, the, the boy, has some lines. The horse has none. And this little red pixel has the lines, my name is Trigger. And the advantage of this is that Sprite has the little red pixel speak those words. And you can see that, that the words, the speech bubble appears a little bit away from the, that, cut those couple of pixels. But the advantage now is I have complete control over where these red pixels, that little red dot appears. And so if I want to have the horse speak those words, and I want to place them coming right out of his mouth, okay, now it's too far to the side. But I could instead use the motion block and say, well, instead of having those uh, those words appear at 3628 where they appear right now. Let's see, I want them to appear maybe another 30 pixels to the right. So I'm going to say 6628, right? And so now when I run this, you see the speech, the little red pixel moved, and now I get the words coming out of his mouth. Still a little bit on his face. Let's try it some more. Let's try 8628. Right, so now I've got the red dot right on his mouth, and I can actually, by controlling where that red dot is, be able to control uh, where that speech bubble is. Now, right now you can actually see the red dot. If I were 
going to really be doing this for a nice program, what I'd probably do is come into the costume menu and change it from a red dot to maybe something pale blue or brown so that it blends into the sprite. So let's change the color on that dot. Let's try it to sort of this sky blue so it appears to be a little bit more the color of the background there. Um, let's try and you just got to kind of tweak it a little bit and so now I've, I've got that let's make and we'll just cover over the top of the red pixel as best we can that's not perfect you can still see it that it's blue there but we're much closer now right it's that that's not nearly as obvious so that's the way that you can get around how do I place the speech bubble rather than associating the speech directly with the sprite that you want to be doing the talking Add it to a really tiny pixel. Again, I made this big so we could see it. You could pop that much smaller. You'd hardly be able to notice that there's a rogue, you know, white or yellow pixel in there. And you have that pixel do the talking. And then you have fine grain control over where the speech bubble actually appears.